Adonis Creed is a ruthless, fearless, shirtless man on a mission. The upcoming latest edition in the Rocky series, Creed II, will, presumably, tell the story of him getting revenge. The idea of getting even has fascinated humans for centuries. But is the idea of revenge being attainable or even desirable grounded in reality? Or is it as fictional as the bloody tales of retribution from history? What would Adonis Creed, or anyone, have to do to get satisfactory revenge? Well, in this video, I'll present the facts on the psychology of vengeance. Now before we get into the psychology, I'll do a brief synopsis for those of you who are not caught up on the 8 movie long Rocky franchise. In Rocky IV, this guy fought that guy, and this guy died. That guy was kind of like, oh well, whatever, about killing this guy, which angers his friends and family which was a little bigger than we thought it was because this guy had a mistress, they had a secret love child, this dude, that guy had a wife, and they had a not so secret love child, that dude. That dude challenges this dude to a fight and I'm taking the fight. So now we're caught up and we can get back to the subject at hand. This story is about revenge. Well how does revenge work? Does it even work at all? Well based on research, in order for revenge to be satisfactory, there needs to be three factors. 1. The Vindicator needs to accept the personal cost of getting revenge. This study has shown that people who actually get to punish a trespasser for cheating in a game reported less satisfaction than a group who were not given the chance for revenge. The reason cited by this and other studies is the Avengers' rumination on the event. An event that would make someone want to seek revenge is usually unpleasant, and unpleasant to think about. So, not only is revenge costly and whatever it is the subject has to do to get even, but there is a cost to one's emotional well-being. From the trailer to the movie, we can see that Rocky, Adonis' mentor, and Apollo Creed's widow have all moved on. They've found other ways to deal with Apollo's death. Adonis is the one fixating on Ivan Drago and his son. So if you're going to seek revenge, you need to realize that revenge comes with the price of pain and distress while planning and enacting retribution. So, if like Adonis, you're down with this cost, you can move on to criteria two. The retribution has to affect the actual offender in a way that they understand is connected to their original action. In psychology, there's a term proxy, which means someone who is serving as an emotional or relational stand-in for someone else. So think of a child who hasn't received affection from his actual mother, developing attachment to an affectionate teacher who is meeting his emotional needs for affection. This process can occur with many unmet desires, but when a proxy is used for vengeance, the results are almost always unsatisfactory. An extreme example of this concept is the power and control type serial killer. This person usually comes from an abusive childhood and experiments with violence with animals or other people as a form of retribution. This deep desire to punish and persistent lack of catharsis is thought to be one of the causes of the escalation to compulsive murder. Now the only studies that I have found any type of reported satisfaction from seekers of revenge come from the ones where the offenders understood why they were being punished and when the offender was punished directly. So now Creed has a problem, because he's not fighting Ivan Drago, he's fighting Victor Drago, who was a baby at the time of his father's death, if he was even around at all. I mean, he could challenge Ivan, but a young and powerful protagonist avenging his father's death by beating up a senior citizen is not a good look. The Lion King got away with that, but that's Disney, they can do whatever they want. Creed, on the other hand, I think is still okay, because Ivan Drago is present for the fight, and in all likelihood understands why Adonis is upset with him. Also, Ivan is using his son's career as a way to get back at Rocky, so it'll probably hurt his feelings if Adonis beats him up. The last component of successful revenge, according to research, is that the vengeful act needs to result in some kind of resolution for both the offender and the avenger. This is a hard one to manage, because people aren't usually like, okay, you beat me fair and square, I guess I'll let it go now. Personally, this isn't something I've even ever heard of happening in real life. And I've only seen it happen in fiction at the end of Kill Bill 2. And even with that, I don't know how much of this smiley death scene was the result of Bill accepting justice, or accepting the fact that he is dead and there's nothing he can do about it. Don't kill people. Studies show that frequently, 
the recipients of revenge feel that their punishment was unjust and in turn seek revenge themselves. This is the reason that, as a clinician, I do not recommend seeking revenge as a way of getting catharsis and closure from pain caused by someone else. Not because of moral questions, that is for you to decide. And not even because things like assault, property damage, and murder are against the law. That's between you and law enforcement. I don't recommend it because it ultimately leaves you at the mercy of the person who hurt you in the first place. I mean, consider Adonis's situation. We're seeing this story mostly from his perspective. He sees his father as having been unjustly killed and is seeking revenge for it. But we've seen from teasers, Victor Drago is also seeking revenge because he feels like his father has had his fame stolen from him by losing to Rocky, who in turn was seeking revenge for the death of Apollo Creed. Revenge doesn't typically have an endgame, and so it leaves the Vindicator stuck in an unresolved state indefinitely. This is why I recommend other ways of seeking catharsis and resolution from trauma, which I'll discuss in my next video. But of course, that's real life. Creed is a movie, and while we have to deal with the difficulties of reality and all of its limitations, Adonis Creed doesn't, and he's probably going to win this fight, because Michael B. Jordan's characters usually don't lose in movies. And that's kind of the fun of movies. They allow us to vicariously experience things, including successfully getting revenge, that are hard to come by in real life. And I think that's pretty psychologically healthy. After all, as Aristotle once said, it's just a movie. It doesn't have to make sense. So I've told you about the research, but, but I have heard of people finding satisfaction and closure from revenge. What's your story? Do you feel like you've ever gotten even with somebody in a way that was cathartic? Or do you feel like revenge was less satisfactory than you expected it to be? Leave a comment and share your experience. And don't forget to subscribe for more pop culture psychoanalysis. Thanks for watching.